Hello, folks. I'm here to introduce Dolores Cannon. I think Dolores uh, probably has more frequent flyer miles than anybody in this hotel. She, um, she has written 13 books. That's probably more in this room than anybody with Wendell Stevens. And they're all very educational. And I happen to know that some are returns from the distributor that Dolores uh, very uh, nicely is going to let you have for $5 a piece. I have most of them in my loaning library. They're very good. Dolores is a regressionist and psychic researcher who specializes in recovery and catalog of lost knowledge. Many of her books help prepare mankind for rapid changes as we uh, move into the new earth. Please welcome Dolores Cannon. Make the announcement about Perry now. Later. You can do that now. Okay. Done. Go ahead. Done. It's already done. She did. Oh, she did it. Oh, okay, she did it. Okay. Oh, I hate these lights. <laughs> Oh boy, I was asking if they could turn the house lights up because I like to see the audience. And you don't know what it looks like from up here. Everything is like a black curtain. I can't do the whole show like that. <laughs> okay. okay. I guess they have to have them that bright, don't they? All right, we'll just see what happens. Oh, that's better. I asked him if they could turn the house lights up a while ago. Then I can see your nice faces. Mm -hmm. I have to have reaction with the audience. I don't like to just stare at nothing. Okay. It has been a nightmare trying to get here. I know the rumors were circulating. I wasn't going to make it. And for a time, I didn't think I was going to make it either. I was stuck two days in the airport trying to get here. All day Saturday, we were in the airport. All of Dallas uh, airport was shut down, nothing going in and nothing going out. Now, they, it wasn't a storm, it was a bad wind. They said it was the highest winds ever recorded at Dallas airport. So nothing was going in or out. And here I was sitting in Arkansas and the whole day trying to get something to get out of there. They kept putting us on different flights and finally they said, no, nothing's leaving. So then yesterday I went back to the airport and I sat there all day. I got the only flight leaving at seven o'clock last night. Was the only one getting here and it snuck through Chicago between storms. And so I'm on that and getting, I did well, at least we're on the plane if nothing else happened. I got in here at three o'clock this morning. We had to rent a car in uh, Las Vegas and drive down. So said, I was beginning to wonder if I was going to make it or not. But the powers that be got me here anyway. But you know, the weather is <laughs> okay. <laughs> we all know the weather's changing and there's so many new things going on. But I know we were talking to the pilot and he said, I don't want to fly in this kind of stuff. And I wouldn't want to be on a plane if it was like that, trying to land if the pilot's scared too. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, anyway, most of you know who I am. I'm not gonna go into too much about that, but I'm still traveling all over the world, giving lectures and my classes everywhere. This last year, I was in the Middle East for the first time. And it was a wonderful experience. And everywhere I go, people say, what are you going there for? Aren't you scared? I've, I never had any problems anywhere I go. And I, in uh, March, I was gone for the whole six weeks. I spoke in India at the International Hypnosis Conference. At least on that trip, I got to see the Taj Mahal. But then I went to Russia and I gave my first class in Russia with a translator to a group of doctors there. And then I went on, had several classes all over Europe. So I'm still traveling a lot in addition to doing lectures all over the United States. 
This year, I'll be going to China. I've been to Hong Kong and Singapore, but this time I'll be going to Taiwan and doing several lectures and premier class there because I have to go where the books are. And the books are constantly being translated into more and more languages. Now they're coming out in Chinese. So I'll be in Australia, New Zealand, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and maybe Thailand. So we're working up a whole month to be gone on that trip. So I definitely don't sit home and twiddle my thumbs. <laughs> I'm not very good at twiddling anyway. <laughs> okay. But I was talking to Bob. I also have a weekly radio show now. I've had it for a year and a half. And it goes out all over the world. So I had Bob Brown on the show last week talking about the conference. And I asked him, I said, you know, I am getting so much co complicated material now, it's not simple anymore. Should I talk about it or not? And he said he thinks you're ready for it. Because usually I don't want to go over the heads of the audience. I try to keep it to where I think they're comfortable and what they can understand. But I don't want to talk down to the audience either. But a lot of times when I get into complicated stuff, I just don't bring it up. But he said, go ahead. He said, some of these people have been coming every year for forever. And they're ready for something that is different. So I'm going to go into some of the complicated metaphysics that I'm getting now. And accept what you can. If you can't understand it, then don't worry about it. I'm still having problems with it. I'm the one that has to lecture about it. <laughs> and when I'm talking to them, and I'll be explaining what that is, I say, you've got to give me analogies. You've got to give me examples. Otherwise, how am I going to explain this to people? So sometimes all I can do is present it and then let you make up your own minds. Because when I get to the point I think I've heard it all, there's nothing new can, can I can come into, then I get a whole other way of thinking, a whole other thought line comes in. And that's what's happening now. They said we're ready, but you know they told me before that all of your questions will never be answered because some information is as poison rather than medicine because our minds can't possibly comprehend. So they would always just give us enough that they think we can handle it. They said, the problem is not the brain, it's our minds. There's no concepts in our minds to really handle what is really going on. So they can just give us enough. And now they're beginning to push the envelope with me. I'm getting more and more material that is becoming more and more complicated. Now you know about the um, convoluted universe series that I'm doing. That's when I began to really get over into things that I thought were mind benders. When I first wrote the first one, I thought people aren't going to understand this. I said, it's for those people who want their minds bent like pretzels. But I kept getting all these emails and wonderful feedback. Everybody says we may not understand it, but it makes us think. So that, I think, is where it's at. If I can present things that open up a whole new avenue, maybe that's what we're supposed to be doing. And then Convoluted 2 came along, and it even expanded it even more. Now I'm working on Convoluted 3. Everybody keeps calling and emailing, saying, when is that book coming out? I'm really working on it. I work every night till 2 o'clock in the morning after I do my publishing business at everything else. But the thing again, I've got too much material, just like I've had in the past. And it's how much do I put in and should I leave some out? I got a letter from England the other day. He said, will there be a book four? <laughs> I don't know. Is this going to keep on going like the Cryon series does or not? Because like I said, when I think I've got it all, then something totally different comes up. So I'm going to go into some of the material today that I haven't talked about before. OK. But a lot of strange things are happening with my work, too, as a hypnotist. 
So I just want to say a few things before I get into this part. You probably know I do past life regression, past life therapy. I've been doing it for 40 years, 30 years consistently, and 20 years as a UFO investigator, which I find it all blends together. It's all connected. There is no separateness between it. So to me, it all falls into the same pot, so to speak, because I'm working with people and their problems. And they come to me now from all over the world just to have sessions. And all walks of life, I mean, I get actors out of Hollywood, I get scientists, I get doctors, I get psychiatrists, business people, people you would never think would be interested in this. But they all want to know what the answer to their problems are. So that's what I'm doing most of the time is focusing on the therapy. Now you can go to a past life therapist, any hypnotist, and have a past life regression. It's not hard to do as long as the hypnotist knows how to do it. The problem is the majority of the hypnotists doing past life regression, that's all they do, just go through a um, past life. And the, they work in the light levels. The person afterwards leaves and they'll say, well, it was interesting, I was in ancient Greece, I was in ancient Rome, but what does that have to do with me now? <clears throat> the hypnotist doesn't follow through on it to tie it up. And that's what I do. I take the person to the past life that is the most appropriate and relevant relating to their problems in this lifetime. Because you've had hundreds and hundreds of lives, everybody has. When you do a session, you're going to get something. But I would rather you'd get something that you can use and relates to the person's problem now. <clears throat> so that's why I've developed my own technique. I work in the deepest possible level of trance, the somnambulistic level. A lot of my hypnotists say they won't work there, they're afraid to work there. They said strange things happen there. Well, if anybody's read my books, you know strange things happen there. And they're afraid to handle it, so they'd rather just stay away from it. But to me, working in the somnambulistic level, you shut out the conscious mind altogether. The conscious mind interference is always there in the lighter levels. If a lot of you have had sessions, you, you, you know, you'll, wake, you'll come out of it and you'll say, I remember everything that went on. I think I made it up. It was silly. I saw it in a movie or I read it in a book. There's a lot of doubt and the conscious mind is sitting there jabber, jabber, jabber. Well, suppose you could shut that out and the person doesn't remember anything when they wake up. They are out of the picture. The conscious mind is completely gone and we go directly to the part that has the answers. That's where I work. I want to work in the somnambulistic level with no conscious mind interference at all. And in the technique I've developed, <clears throat> The experts say one out of 20 or one out of 30 people will go into the somnambulistic level spontaneously. In the one I've developed, it's the opposite is true. One out of 20 or one out of 30 will not go. Everyone goes into the deep level. We shut out the conscious mind and allow these remarkable things to happen. Now, I work with what I call the subconscious mind. People say, what do you mean by that? I don't mean the subconscious as it is defined by the psychiatrist. I work with psychiatrists. I've been having them in my classes now. That definition to me is the childish part of the mind that they work with on habits. The one I call the subconscious, you may say is the higher self, the oversoul, the higher consciousness. It has the answer to everything. Why not go to that part to get your answers instead of the conscious part has, is the last one to know anything. Why not go to that part that has the answers to everything? That's the part that I deal with. I call it the subconscious. They say, we don't care what you call us. We'll answer to anything. <laughs> so they, uh, that's what I mean by they. I've gotten so used to speaking to that part now, it's like talking to an old friend. 
I know, and a lot of hypnotists say, well, the only way you can speak with the subconscious is with hand motions. Well, I've discredited that. No, this is a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that part of the mind. Hand motions, you're going to get a yes or no answer. What if you get where it's going to tell you more than you want to know? And if you know from my books, it tells you everything it thinks you're capable of handling. And the information pours out of everyone that comes to see me. This is the part that I'm working with. I do a lot of work with people with physical problems, health issues. I have had many, many people come to see me who are getting ready to have operations. If we can get to them before they go in for surgery, they won't need surgery. Now, this sounds drastic, but when I was doing my lectures in England, they say you cannot say you're able to cure. I said, they said, we'll say we're, you're able to relieve, but we're able to take it away in one session. This is very powerful things that we're working here. When you're tapping into this gigantic pool of information and knowledge, and I've had instantaneous um, cures in my office, because I only have time for one session with the person. You've got to get in there and get it done. And they come long distances to have this done. So the main thing I'm working with is the health issues. Now, what I've found, you make yourself sick. You may not believe it, but you're the one that gives yourself the illness, the disease. If you're that powerful that you can make yourself ill, you're also powerful enough that you can take it away. You gotta find out why. Why did I do this to myself? Why did I make myself sick? Why did I give myself to, this to myself? And that's what I work on. We go to either a past life that has the answer, whatever it is that the person's problem. They come to me with all kinds of problems. We go back to the past life to find the answer. But a lot of people that come in talking about different ailments, different parts of their body, I can usually tell them what's going on in their life now because it always affects the same parts of the body. Now what I've found is the subconscious, when you, any ache, pain, or symptom of the body is the subconscious trying to give you a message. It's trying to tell you something. If you don't listen, it gets a little worse. It's still trying to get your attention. A little worse, a little worse. It thinks it's being quite logical and makes sense, but we still don't understand what is it trying to tell you. So it gets a little worse until finally it'll get to the point where you have a full-blown disease or illness that you end up in the hospital or having to have operations. And they are always saying no surgery, no invasion of the body. They don't want that. And they tell me once something's been taken out, they can't put it back. So we have to get it fixed before they have the operation to find out why have they gone that far? What is it that they're trying to tell themselves? I mean, I've had people come into my office in wheelchairs on crutches because they didn't get the message and it went too far. If you don't get the message, believe me, they'll hit you up the side of the head. And that's what's happened to a lot of these people. One was a multimillionaire who lost everything because he was headed in the wrong direction. They had to do something to turn him around. He was not listening. And I don't think this is cruel. I think we make a, um, an agreement before we come in. We want to go a certain way, and if we stray off of that way, they're going to get us back on one way or the other. So a lot of what we think is not good is always happening for a reason. So that's what I work with is people's illnesses, their physical problems, their family problems. Everybody that comes in wants to know what's my purpose, why am I here, what am I supposed to be doing with my life. We can find out if it is appropriate because they say, suppose we told you what you were supposed to be doing too soon. Maybe what you're supposed to be doing is 180 degrees from what you're doing now. 
And you'd say, oh, no, I'd never do that. That's not what I'd want to do. And you'd put blocks in your way to keep it from happening. They know how you're going to react. And they know when your time for you to know what you're supposed to do. So they will tell us if it is appropriate. They will tell you everything. But I had one man that they said, no, we can't tell him. It's not time. But they said, oh, we wish we could. You don't know what we see. But they said, consider he is where you were 20 years ago. You don't give a baby a three-course meal. You start out with cereal, milk, cereal, strained vegetables. You can't give a baby a three-course meal. You have to do it little by little. And that's what they've been doing with me for 30 years, a spoonful at a time of information. If what I'm getting now would have been dumped on me 20 years ago, I couldn't have handled it. I wouldn't have understood it. They let me understand and digest one little spoonful at a time, and then it gets more and more complicated. So unless the person is ready, they're not going to get what they're looking for because it wouldn't make any sense to them. Okay, but a strange thing began happening, oh, it's been about 20 years ago, and I was working on the UFO material and all of that, is suddenly these other voices would come through. And I never know for sure now, I can tell the difference whether I'm talking to an ET or if I'm talking to a spirit guide or if I'm talking to the higher consciousness, the oversoul, the subconscious as I call it. it all, they all speak in different ways. But this cannot be a hoax if I do hundreds and hundreds of people and the same voice comes through everybody that I work with. The same phraseology, the same way of speaking, and they always give the same information for that person. They, the person doesn't know what I've been doing. They don't even know what I'm looking for. I'm dealing with something here that is very, very big and has a great deal of information and is very important. And that's why they said I'm supposed to continue working with them because my job is to take the information and spread it to people. Well, it began to be more noticeable within the last 10 years. This was after I started putting the material together for Convoluted One. I'd be in England doing a session. They never interrupt the session. At the end of the session, they will suddenly come through in this strange voice and say, Dolores, this is the next piece of information you need for your next book. And later the person will say, who was that at the end of that tape when they listened to it? Because it's not my voice, they'd say. Well, they will give me a theory that I've not heard before. Then the next week I'm back in the States and I'm doing another client. The same thing will happen again. They'll come through and expand on the same thing they have just told me. So see, I'm working with something here that's very hard to understand. A lot of you may think it's a hoax, but how can it keep happening through person after person all over the world? All I have to do is get the conscious mind out of the way, get them into the deep level, and all of these things happen. There's a lot more stranger things that are happening in my work right now that it's, we're going in a different direction here but I trust them to take me the way we're supposed to go. But I want to bring up some points to make some other things clearer as we get into it. Okay, if you read my book, Between Death and Life, that's the story of what happens when you die and where you go afterwards. When I wrote that book, it was a combination of hundreds and hundreds of people. I figure if all these people are saying the same thing, then there has to be some truth to it. I think it's as good as a scientific investigation if you have a repeatable phenomena over and over again. If they're all saying the same thing, there's got to be something to it. But all of these people, when I was writing the book Between Death and Life, were all telling me the same thing. They all described the death experience the same way. They all described where they went the same way, and it's still continuing now. I, t I take them through the death experience at the end of the past life regressions. 
A lot of hypnotists won't do that. They're afraid something's going to happen. But these are where you get your information. Because by taking the person through the death experience, you may find a reason for their problems in this life, especially their phobias or their physical problems. So you have to take them through the death experience. I found they were all saying the same thing. They were all describing the same thing over there. They were all describing what happened. That once you get over there, you do a preview of your past life you just left. There's all kinds of guides, elders, masters. There's boards, councils that help us with all of these things. And they're all there to advise you. There is no condemnation. There is never any judgment. That's only this world that does those kind of things. When you get over there, they show you your past life. They show you everything you did. And a lot of it you're not going to be very happy with. <laughs> But another thing about it, they show it to you from the other person's viewpoint. That's hard, because then you'll say, I didn't know I hurt them like that. I didn't know what I said hurt them that bad. I didn't know it affected them that way. You suddenly see it from the other person's viewpoint. This is where karma really comes in. When you're in the middle of it, you don't realize it. You think going through your life, and you don't realize you're actually hurting people. But over there, you see it from the other person's side. There's no God sitting on a throne who's going to judge you and punish you. You look at your past life. You judge yourself. There's no harsher judge than you yourself. You see it, and you think, that wasn't right, I've got to pay that back. And you design the way it's going to happen. You say, okay, I've got to go back, I've got to meet this person again, and you talk to them, you say, let's work it out this way. We didn't do such a good job, did we? This time you be the husband, I'll be the wife. <laughs> we'll reverse roles around. It happens all the time. <clears throat> so, you come back with a little plan that this is what I'm going to do. I want to get it over with. Because karma, it's what goes around comes around. There's no escaping it. If it doesn't happen in this life, a lot of it is happening now because we want to get it over with. But if it doesn't, it'll happen in the next life or maybe one 100 years from now. But you're never going to get out of what you have done. And there's also good karma. But you make these decisions. This is what I want to pay back with this person. What's happening now, we are getting so bogged down into this, we're not paying it back. We just keep coming back again and again and again, making the same mistakes over and over again. Earth is a school. You come here to learn lessons. They said Earth is a challenging planet. The main lesson you come here to learn is emotions and limitations. They're not experienced on a lot of other planets. Here we experience them in, in depth, emotions and limitations. And over there, you look at it, you say, oh, I can do that. That's no problem. Love, hate, jealousy, I can handle that. That doesn't sound so bad. But then you get in here, it's a lot different. This is a planet of free will. You come in with your nice little plan, all wrapped up like a Christmas present. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to get out. I don't have to come back anymore. But you get down here, and everybody else has got their nice little plans, and everything clashes. That's free will. We don't realize what's happening. And Earth is a school where you can't skip a grade but you can take the grade over again. You don't get to go on to the next lesson until you've learned this lesson. You can't graduate. You can't jump from kindergarten to college. You have to go step by step. And if you're not getting it, you'll be repeating the same thing again and again. How many of you in your life now know, see that? The same thing over and over. I keep drawing the same kind of a man to me. I keep drawing the same kind of a woman same kind of a situation, 
when am I going to get out of this? It's because you haven't figured out what it's trying to teach you. Once you figure out what it's trying to teach you, then you go on to the next lesson, which may or may not be better. It may be worse, but it's all about learning. And if you don't learn, you have to come back and do the whole same thing all over again with the same people. And people say, I don't want to do that. I've had enough of this. I don't want to come back with the same people again. But if you don't learn it, this is what it's destined to do. You don't get out of it. And Earth is not the only school that you go to. People tell me they're so surprised to find out they've had one past life on Earth. I said, oh, that's just the beginning, just the very tip of the iceberg. You've lived on other planets. You've lived in other dimensions. Earth is a very young planet. It's isolated over here in this part of the solar system. You have been around forever since the beginning, having adventures. You've lived in other planets, other dimensions. You've had bodies that were just pure energy. I get this all the time with the people I'm working with. They don't go to past lives here on Earth. They go to other dimensions where they have bodies you can't even believe. And when you finish your life here, finally you're going to get through eventually. Then maybe you'll say, well, okay, I just think I'm going to go over to this other planet over here, the other dimension, and I'll experience that for a while. So it's a constant learning that's going on all of the time. Now what I found is that we all came from God. There is no evil, there is no bad, there is no good. It's all energy. And what do you do with that energy? You can use it for good, you can use it to hurt people. It's all energy and this is how you accumulate the karma. But it all did begin with God. But that's why there's no judgment over there, because it's all experiences. Everybody has had something bad happen in their life. But you look at it and you think, did you learn anything from it? If you learned even one thing from the experience, that was the purpose of the experience. You didn't, you're going to have to take it again until you learn it. I asked them one time, wouldn't it be easier if we knew about all of this before we came in? While we're in here, wouldn't it be easier if we knew why we came, what we're supposed to be working out? They said, it wouldn't be a test if you knew the answers. <laughs> a little sneaky, isn't it? This is the only planet where we come in with everything wiped out. The other planets that the ETs live on, all the other beings live on, they are very aware of who they are. They're aware of their connection to the source, to God. They know why they are doing what they're supposed to be doing. They are very connected. We are not. That's part of the school, part of the test. He said, if you came in, everything is wiped out. I've had them come when they're going through the birth experience and they'll be saying, I got to remember, I got to remember. <laughs> then they're born and they'll say, I don't remember anymore. <laughs> it's just wiped clean. I have had a few people who do remember the other side, but not very many. You come in as a blank slate and when you leave, when you die, that uh, blinders are taken off and then you know it all again you are, have all the information at that point. But when you come in, they said, what greater test than to live a life thinking you are all alone, that you don't have any connections to anybody, that there isn't anything bigger than you, and you have to do it all from scratch by yourself. They said, what greater test is there than that? To feel your own way, where the other ones know. They feel sorry for us, that's why they're here trying to help us. But can you understand their way of thinking? You're never alone. You've always got somebody with you. But we feel like we are. 
So this is part of the test. How are we going to react coming into a world thinking we're all by ourselves, nobody to help us, and we have to feel our way gradually back to the reason behind everything. And many people don't. They showed us a picture in one of the sessions. They said, we see all of these people wandering around, not literally, but they appear to be all bent over and ugly looking and just uh, all snarled up and they can't even stand up straight as they have all these loads on their back. And I said, what does that represent? That it means they keep coming back one life after the other, piling it on top of each other till they're all bent over. They haven't got a clue of why they're here, what they're trying to work out, and they're just going round and around in circles. And that's the ones that are going to have the hardest time getting rid of that to come out of this, because we are coming to the point now we have to come out of this. It's just part of what we are doing. Now, when Jesus came, and I wrote the book about Jesus and the Essenes, this is what he was trying to tell people. You're going round and around on this wheel of karma, making the same mistake over and over again. He wanted to show people how to get off of the wheel, progress upward in their development. That was the whole reason for him coming. He said, if he's going to save you from anything, it was saving you from the wheel of karma. They didn't understand. But that was the main thing, and that's coming back again. You've got to get rid of all of this to release it and let it go. Okay, I've got so many things I want to say. I'm trying to think what order to say them in. Okay. Now, when you began on this whole adventure, you started with God, who every, during all the sessions, they all call it the source. You started with the source, with God. We were all a part of that. And everyone I've had describe it the same way, as a huge energy, an unbelievable energy. Some of them call it the great central sun. It's a huge, bright light. And they say when they are there, it is so beautiful and comforting. There's a love beyond comparison you could never experience on Earth. They feel that when they are with the source, they don't want to leave. You're all together there, and that's where we all started out. Problem is, you can't stay there. God became curious. He wanted to learn. He couldn't learn as he was. So when he decided to learn, he split out in all directions. This is the equivalent of the Big Bang Theory. He broke apart into billions and billions of tiny fragments and pieces. And he says, go and learn and bring the information back to me. Every one of us, they saw all these tiny, tiny sparks shooting out in all different directions. Some of the sparks became planets. Some of them became galaxies. Some of them became human souls. Every one of us, when I've taken the people back, they tell me these things. I don't ask them, but I know now I'm going to get the same answer every time. When you take you back as far as you can go to the real you, it's just a tiny, tiny spark. Tiny, tiny spark of energy, which is called the spark of life because you cannot exist without the spark of life within you. When the body dies, the spark of life leaves. All you are is this tiny little spark that is journeying and doing all these things. A lot of people say they're, they come to me, say they don't want to be here, they're lonely, they feel they don't belong here, they want to go home, they don't know where home is. That's what it is, because they feel so separated from their home, where they came from. You were sent out to learn. He said, learn everything. And I'm getting this from all the people. The ETs are also involved in all of this. The accumulation of information is extremely important. The accumulation of knowledge. 
Everyone that's sent out are told to learn, learn everything, and then bring it back. You can't get back to the source until you have finished school, till you graduate. So you're doing all these different adventures, you come to Earth. We consider us like cells in the body of God. We are constantly journeying, gathering information, just like a cell in the body. You come to Earth, which is the easiest for people to understand, but you've already been all these other places in between. You come to Earth, you have to be everything. This body you have now is the least of it. You are not a body, you have a body. I say it's like a suit of clothes. You decided this time around, this is the suit you're going to wear. This is the costume you're going to put on for this play that you're going to be in. And when I take people through the death experience, they look back and they'll say, it was just a play. I see all the actors on stage. I see the actors getting ready to come on and say their lines. That's all it was. It was a game. It was just a play. But they said, while I was there, it seemed so serious, so complicated. But then they're over there and they said, but now it's like it was a blink of an eye. And it's over. We do. We get caught up in the illusion. And in Convoluted 2, I talk about the illusion that we're in. You realize you're in an illusion and you're constantly creating your reality, you can make your reality anything you want it to be. You can change it because you are the one that's in charge. But anyway, this is just a vehicle that you're using right now. Like every suit of clothes, eventually it's gonna wear out and you're gonna have to throw it away. No matter how attached you get to it, no matter how much you like that suit, eventually you're gonna to have to throw it away. Then you take on another costume, another suit of clothes. As all it is is progression from body to body, learning something different each time, or repeating the same thing over and over if you don't get it the first time. So this is a constant thing that you're doing, okay? When you come to Earth, you have to be everything. That means absolutely everything. Now, I've had people be things you wouldn't even think were alive. What's it like to be a rock? Everything is alive. Everything has consciousness. It's all dealing with vibrations and frequencies. It's vibrating at a different frequency. Rocks have a very low vibration. And when I've had somebody tell me they were a, a rock, they said it's very slow, you know, very boring. <laughs> but you have to know what it is like to be each one of these things before you can go on to the next one. Now, some of you may be having to stretch your mind a little for this, because I'm going to even have you stretch your mind more later. So I'm hoping you can stay with me. OK. Then I've had people be part of the air. You have to be gaseous. You have to know what that is like. So it shows everything has consciousness if we have our personality that is telling me what it was like to experience these things. I've written about these in several of my books where one man was part of the atmosphere at the time that the earth was first cooling down so life could first exist here. His job was to take the ammonia out of the air. So he was part of the air. Then you have to know what is it like to be a plant. I've had people be ears of corn, be a flower. And I'm writing about this now in book three. I'm going to have a whole section on what is it like to experience life as animals and plants. We don't think of them as being alive. Right now in our world, the way it is right now, we have to be very aware of this, what we are doing to our world, because it is all alive. It all does have consciousness, and it all knows what we are doing to it. If you realize you've been all these things, I think you can relate more easily to it. 
Now somebody was in your car and said, oh, this was fine to sit out here in the sun and let the sun shine on me and let the breeze blow me around. And it's very beautiful to be a flower, but they said a flower has a very short life. And, but they explained what it's like. And then what is it like to be an animal? What's it like to be a wolf and be able to run? What would it be like to be a bird and be able to fly? I've had wonderful experiences related to me about people who were these various animals. I think it's fascinating because I want to know what the animal experiences. For instance, I had someone who went to a life as an eagle. She's sitting up on a cliff with her nest, and she had a little chick in the nest, looking out at the valley below. Now, how do we know, how do scientists know what an eagle, what a bird sees? I don't think they really know. Because she said, as she looked out, the colors were so vibrant and the shadows were so dark. It was just a wonderful display of color. But as she looked at the floor below the valley, and if she saw a rabbit running across the floor, she focused on that rabbit, her vision would change. And suddenly, it would become like infrared. The way we see it, she was seeing the energy of the rabbit and focusing on it. But then she said, well, I'm not hungry right now. My chick's not making any noise. I'll let it go. And then the eyesight returned to normal. At night, when she was looking out, the vision was green. She could pick up movements. And I said, doesn't that remind you of the night vision goggles that the soldiers wear? He always showed them as seeing green and energy forms. That was what she was seeing. That's remarkable. How do we know animals could do things like that? When I do a session, I want to know these things. I want to know exactly what's going on here. Can somebody be a spider? And they all have all these many eyes. I always wondered how they could see with all those many eyes. You know how they do it? They said it's like looking at many little TV sets. And where they see movement, that's the one they focus on. And I don't know, I think this would be interesting for scientists if they would understand how these things really operate. So I'm writing a whole section on just what I found that the animals experience, because I think it's fascinating. And then <clears throat> in between there, they have the little people. The little people are very real. And I speak a lot in England and Ireland and those places. They're the nature spirits. The nymphs and the dryads, the fairies, the gnomes, the elves, they are the, the spirits that take care of the plants and the animals. You've all been those also. And they told me, don't downplay the importance of the nature spirits because when we get to the shifting of the world and the catastrophes that are going to happen, those spirits will have a very important part to play in the rebuilding of the earth. So it's going to be very important when we get to that point. But all of you experienced all these things. Then you have to go to humans. The animal spirits are a different type of a spirit than a human is. It's a group spirit. In order to become a human, you have to take him out of the group spirit and give it a personality and an individuality so that it can become a human. So they said one way to do that, was you know group spirits are like you know, herds of cattle, flocks of birds, hives of bees, you've seen them, they all operate with like one consciousness. That's what I mean by a group soul. One way to take the animal out of the group soul to make it an individual is love. You take an animal into your home, cat, dog, whatever, you give it an individual attention, you give it a personality, you are helping it to escalate up to becoming a human. This is how the separation takes place. Incidentally, cats see us in a very strange way. 
dogs mostly operate on smell. The cat, his eyesight sees you first as an energy. Then he figures out what you are. I think that's fascinating. He explains how the animals can see ghosts when we can't. They see energy forms and then they focus in on that. But um, anyway, then you get to the human. Okay, now you're in the human stage. You have to be everything. You've gotta be male and female many, many times and people sometimes get upset by that. They say, no, I've always been a man, what do you mean? You, you wouldn't learn everything if you were just one all the time. You have to experience both sides of everything, male and female, many, many times. You have to live on every continent in the world. You have to be every religion in the world, every race in the world. You gotta be rich and poor. You have to know what it's like to be on every side of every situation. And when you finally understand this, there's no prejudice, there's no judgment, because you know you've either been these other races or these other religions, or you're going to be, especially if you're too judgmental now. See the karma you're building up? That when you go, then you'll have to be that other religion or that race because you've got to pay back the karma. If it would be so simple, there wouldn't be any wars, there wouldn't be any violence, there wouldn't be any hatred if we could only understand that. We're all part of the same consciousness. But you have to do all of this before you can graduate and go back to the source. Because in between every life, you're going to the spirit side, getting your instructions, and then getting, you know, going back again until you're finally going to graduate and then you go back to the source and become one again. And somebody at a lecture said, then what? <laughs> That's supposed to be the ultimate. But sometimes when I'm telling this about having to be everything, some of the people in the audience look very depressed. I think, you're thinking they have to do all of that. I think when you get to the point that you're beginning to ask questions, beginning to seek, you're beginning to come to conferences to want to know information. I think you've already gone through a lot of these steps and now you're getting on the way out. You're getting ready to move on. That's the way I see it anyway. So let's hope that's the way it is. But so you don't have to think you're back here at the very beginning and just starting out. But the most important thing of all, especially right now, is to get rid of all this old karma. We're going to go into something that's very important. We're going into a new world, a new earth. You can't drag this karma with you. The new earth is going to be beautiful and perfect and positive. There's no room for negative karma. You've got to get rid of it. And that's when I'm, when I'm working with my clients, we discuss these things. What is the quickest but not the easiest way to get rid of karma. Do you know? Some people say, do it back to them. That doesn't do anything but keep <laughs> perpetuating. Forgive. You have to forgive. You gotta let it go. Very, very difficult, very, very hard. I've had people, a lot of my clients, I tell them you're dragging all of this garbage and baggage around with you. They don't realize that's what's making them sick. Anger causes cancer. Holding cancer, especially into the abdominal region, holding on to hate, anger, and not being able to express it and get rid of it creates cancer. A lot of the diseases of the body is holding these things in not releasing it. And after a while, it begins to eat away at the body. It's so simple, once you begin to figure it out, you find out, what is it that's bothering me? I had a man come to me <coughs> that had cancer in every part of his body. As soon as they would fix it in one part of his body, it would pop up in another part of his body. They'd fix that, it'd pop up in another part. So I was talking to him and I said, are you angry at anything? 
He said, oh yes, my ex-wife, I hate her. <laughs> that she has the children and she won't let me see them. And I said, that's the answer right there. He, he's holding on to that. He's only hurting himself, letting it eat away at him. And I said, well, the only way you're going to get rid of this, you're going to have to forgive her and release her and let it go. I always say, tear up the contract. Remember I said you make a contract with these people when you come in? It's not working. Some people have gone through a pattern, many, many lives with the same people over and over again. It's not working. Tear up the contract and say, you go your way, I'll go mine. We don't want to play with this anymore. We don't want to play this game. We don't want to keep doing it again. So I tell them, tear up the contract. So I said, you've got to have to forgive her and release her and let her go. He said, I can't do that. If I do, then she has won. <laughs> I said, she will win if she kills you. <laughs> But it's very difficult for people to let things go. But you'd be surprised, once you let it go, you feel so much freer, you feel so much lighter. They can't hurt you anymore. They can't push the buttons. You know what it's like, and a lot of you do, it's just playing a game. They know what buttons to push to get you angry, to get you upset. It doesn't work anymore once you've let them go and say, I don't want any part of it. You don't have to say this consciously to them. You can say it subconsciously to the person, say, I'm releasing you, I'm letting it go. They can't do it anymore, it doesn't work. And then it's no fun, so they quit, stop doing it. it. May sound easy, but this is going to have to be done. We've got to get rid of the karma. We cannot go into the new world carrying all this junk around with us. We're not going to be allowed to do it. Okay. Another thing we're going to have to get rid of is fear. See, we are getting ready. We're in the middle of it now. It's happening now. We are moving into a new dimension. The entire world is shifting into a new dimension, a new frequency. I think I've talked before to either here or in other groups about their dimensions all around us. We just can't see them. They're all vibrating at different frequencies. It's rather like if you saw a propeller blade or a fan blade. When it speeds up, it becomes invisible. It's still there, but it becomes invisible because it's vibrating at a different frequencies. The ETs know this because this is the way they travel. They travel from dimension to dimension by raising and lowering their dimensions. This is why they can disappear when somebody's watching a UFO and suddenly disappears into the other dimension. And then other times it'll just reappear suddenly into this dimension. That's because they are raising and lowering the, the vibrations of the craft to enter and re go out. This is the way they travel. I've done other talks too where I've got so many people sending me emails about how they have gone in and out of other dimensions without even realizing it. Because they suddenly are in, they're experiencing things that are very strange to them. There might be something there that they go back the next day and it's not there. They're shifting in and out of dimensions all the time. Okay. I think I better back up a little bit here. There's an important point that just came into my mind that I want to just talk about. Okay. Now, when we leave God to do all of these experiences, we are more than just that little spark. That's the spark that is in this body. You are part of a much bigger soul. Now, it's not the oversoul. And the oversoul that I'm speaking to on these, when I'm doing the sessions is not as high as God. But all of us has a soul that is composed of many, many parts. Uh, in book two, I talked about it where they, say, they said it was like facets. Say if you looked at a diamond or a crystal with many, many facets. 
and the light was shining out of all the different facets. That's really what we are. All of the energy of our entire soul could never enter into one body. The energy would be so strong, the body would explode. They've told me their energy, if it came into the room where I'm having the sessions, would be so strong, the room would explode. So just a tiny, tiny fragment is all that can be allowed at any one time. The body can't handle it. So when it enters the body, that tiny spark comes off of the soul that is you and enters into your body. Now at the same time, you are experiencing life in many other forms because of all the facets of this diamond. This was very hard <coughs> for me to understand, so if you're kind of shaking your heads, I can understand because it took me a lot to begin to get a handle on this. But it's as like all of our lives, past, future, and uh, present are all existing at the same time. And you're living them all at the same time. But you can't know this. The mind couldn't handle it. All you can focus on is this life right now because that's where we're focused. Imagine how uh, disturbing it would be if you knew about all these other lives you were living in the past, if you had it all in your memory right now, or knew of all the lives you're going to live. Your mind couldn't handle it. You know, I always wonder, I think a lot of people in these mental hospitals probably don't need to be there. They're just things going on the doctors don't understand that they're experiencing these things and not really knowing what it is. But you, you have to focus on this life right now because this is where you are. But it is really all going on at the same time. Remember in my Nostradamus books, I was communicating with him while he was alive, living in France, and he kept insisting this, I am not dead. And it, it came out that this was simultaneous time. It was occurring at the same time that our life now was occurring. It was all interacting at the same time. And that was my first exposure to simultaneous time. But they said, all of the lives we have ever lived are all existing right now. And when we do a past life regression, I just tune in, I guess, like a radio, and we go to that life that that person is living that they need. But it's all happening at the same time. And... Um, See, it even gets, it gets a lot more, even more complicated, too. You don't know how much information is coming through my head right now. Okay. But I asked them one time, I said, I don't understand this. How can everything be happening at the same time? Because we know we grow from a baby to a child to an adult, and we have experiences in our life where time is passing. How can it all be happening at the same time? They said it's not happening at the same time because happening means a beginning and an end. It's existing at the same time. It's existing, if that makes it any clearer. The ET said time is an illusion. Man, they said mankind is probably the only species in the universe that's found a way to measure something that does not exist. <laughs> Leave it up to us to figure out a way to do something. But uh, they said, we'll never travel in space as long as we are trapped in time. And we are trapped in time. One day after the other, one week after the other, we have to be somewhere at a certain time. <coughs> so this is only an illusion we have created for ourselves. So if you go deeper, you find out all of these lives are existing at the same time. I don't know if that's sunk in yet. I'm going to give you something else that'll be a little deeper. Is this okay? Because I never know how much people can handle, and I don't, definitely don't want to overload your brains. Just, I would say, treat it as mind candy. Just an interesting thing. You can take it or not when you leave. Say, well, okay. But uh, at least I'm presenting it out there what I found, anyway. 
the only way I can handle this stuff is just to say, okay, it's interesting, go on to the next thing. Okay, they said, if everything is energy, you are energy, the floor is energy, the chair is energy, everything around you is energy. It's all vibrating at different frequencies, okay? Now, we all come to crossroads in our lives, don't we? We all come to points when we could go one direction or the other direction. And no matter which way we chose to go, our lives would be totally different, wouldn't they? You know yourself, if I'd married this guy, my life would have been different. If I'd taken this job, my life would be different. You know, if you, these crossroads are very important. Your life could go totally different from each way. When you come to these crossroads, you're thinking about what you want to do. You're trying to make a decision. All right? You decide, I'll go this way. You put energy into each decision. What happens to the other decision that you did not choose to focus on? What happens to that other possibility? What? It becomes a reality also. You have created the other possibility with your mind. In that other reality, another you is living out the other decision. And I always say, well, I wish them luck anyway. <laughs> it's because that's how powerful the mind is and when we're creating. We don't go that way, but it comes into existence, it comes into reality, and another you is living that other reality. Gets a little deep, don't it? That's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Because they said, doesn't have to be major decisions. Every time you make a decision of any kind, whether to stay home from work or go to work, whether to take the car or not take the car, whether to cross the street or not cross the street, every time you make a decision, it splits again. And another you is acting out the other one. This can really get mind-blowing, can't it? <laughs> And so finally, there's an infinite number of realities all occurring at the same time. They existing at the same time, they said. And it's only real for you, the one you're focused on at the present time. It'd be very complicated otherwise, wouldn't it? <laughs> I've had people come to me that say they have dreams that they are living in another city and they're doing something totally different, and it seems so real and they wanted to know what was going on. And they, I was told, that's just another one of them, another facet that's existing, that living in another life. And they said, it's better not to look into it, don't try to find the person, because it will only be confusing. Live in the one you're focused on at the present time. So it can get pretty, pretty deep anyway. Okay. Now something is happening in my work, and I'm going to get back to the new earth in a minute, because in the past, for the past 30 years, when I've taken people into past lives, they've always gone back into other lifetimes, found the answers, described the whole lifetime, and you know, I've written many books about lifetimes these people have lived. That's the way it's always been. This last year, it's not like that anymore. That's what I'm saying. An evolution is occurring in my work, like an evolution of hypnosis. I felt I've taken my hypnosis already to a level that it has never been taken to before, and now it is even going even further. Now when I'm doing the sessions, we go to the point in the session, they're supposed to be in a past life. They're not. They're back with the source. They're back in this beautiful light that is the source. And they don't want to leave because it's so beautiful and it's comfortable and it's just such love, they won't want to leave there. Then I say, well, what made you decide to leave? And then they said, the earth was calling. 
The earth is in trouble. The earth is calling us to come and help. I said, does anybody tell you you have to do these things? Because on the spirit side, you have the advisors that help you decide. Does anybody telling you you have to do these things? They said, no, I feel the call and I must go. Then when they do come, take them forward and everything, they said, I'm, they keep saying, I'm here to help. There's something I'm supposed to do. And I'm here to help the people. Now that doesn't always... Every time I've asked the subconscious, what are they, what's their purpose? What are they here to do? It never says they're here to have a good time and to drink and be merry and run around. It never says any of that. Make a lot of money. It always says they're here to help each other. Isn't that interesting? It always says the same thing. Many, many of these people are being told they have to be healers. They have to be here to heal. They have to be able to help each other because we're going to go through some very bad times. But they're never told their purpose in life is just to have a good time and to play. But in these cases where the people uh, go back to the source, when I get to the subconscious and I said, well, what happened? We were supposed to be going to a past life. They said, not important anymore. Doesn't matter anymore. Been there, done that. Curiosity, okay, but you don't need it anymore. They said, you're not supposed to be focusing on that anymore. Get rid of the karma, get it out of here. You're supposed to be focusing on now and what's happening in this life right now and going into this future that's coming. So that's what they want us to know. And so it's happening again and again and again Instead of going to a past life, they're going back to the source and being told what they're here for. And many, many of these people, this is their first time to come. And these are people that just, just look like all of you, ordinary, everyday people. They all look alike. They don't know this on a conscious level, but they're being told this is their first time to be here. There's something going on here that is much more important now, I have found three waves of people. I'm trying to watch the clock. I don't know if there's going to be time for questions or we just want to keep, I'll keep talking anyway. <clears throat> I found three waves of people in the 30 years I've been doing this that have been coming. I've been able to kind of put them in categories now. The first ones were the volunteers that came. <clears throat> the book I wrote, Keepers of the Garden, was my first contact with one of these, <clears throat> who had never lived on Earth before. And he was told to come and help the Earth, and he'd volunteered. He didn't want to be here. He was very unhappy here. He wanted to go home. He didn't know where home was. And he tried to commit suicide. Now, he is now 50. Well, when I was working with him, he was about 30. This was the first wave of volunteers that came. They had the most difficulty, having a hard time to adjust. This young man had a wonderful family. He had a good job. <clears throat> no reason for him to be depressed, but yet he knew he wasn't supposed to be here. They have a very hard time adjusting. <clears throat> and now that book is translated all over the world, I'm hearing more and more people say, I thought I was the only one in the world that felt this way. And I'm so glad to hear there's other people out there who also feel alone and like they, they want to know what, why they're here. And they do want to commit suicide. Well, that group now would be in late 40s, early 50. And then they had the most difficulty. The second wave that I've been finding are like in their late 20s and 30s. They haven't had the problems that the first group did. They're adjusting very well. But many of them don't do anything. <clears throat> I've been told they are antennas, like channels and antennas. All they're here for is to direct the energy into the earth as we go through these things. Many of them, if they do get married, they don't have children. 
because they said when they come in like this, it's very important they do not get caught up in the karma of the world. They want to do their job and get out. To create karma means they got to be stuck here. And they say it's like being stuck in molasses and mud. It's very difficult to get out again once you get into that. So a lot of them, are they, we've been telling in the sessions, are coming in with a kind of like a, a sheath, a membrane, a coating over them so they cannot accumulate karma. So they can get in and get out. But they're here to do good, but they said if they have children, they're afraid they would accumulate karma, so they don't want to have children. But a lot of them just live very nondescript lives. They're, they're good people, they're happy people, and they are influencing everyone around them with their energy. And that's what it's supposed to be. That's that group of people. The third group are the ones they call the indigo children, and the indigo children is not a good term. All it is is the new generation of children that are coming in right now. They are coming in with their DNA already in place. All of the adjustments have been made, and they're coming in with everything ready to go. And they have a hard time because of us and the teachers that don't understand them. But these are the, the hope of the world. And when I've spoke at conferences where they are trying to educate the educators about these children, I was told to give them challenges. They're bored is all it is. They're bored with the system. They're bored with school. Give them challenges. Even if you just give them something to tear apart and put back together again, you're influencing their mind. This is what you're supposed to do with these type of children. Keep their mind active. But I asked them one time, I said, why did the first group have so much trouble adjusting? They said because they were the way showers. They were the pioneers to set the stage and get in here. The other ones did not have as hard of a time following them. These are the ones that are coming now, to be here now. More and more of them are coming. And so I'm getting more and more people that go back to where they say, this is my first life on earth. They don't know it consciously, but it comes out during this session. They're here to help. Okay. <clears throat> now, something very strange happened just this last week when I had two cases. All of this is going to go in book three anyway. I did have a whole section about the new earth in book two, but in book three, I'm going to have even more. I had a session where... Um, instead of going to a past life, it was like an entity speaking through them. And they said, um, this is our first time here. And I said, well, did you come in when the, the woman, when she was a baby or what? And they said, no, we entered in 1993. And I said, when did that happen? I said, when she died. And I said, oh, and they said, she had what she thought was a near-death experience. And it was allowed that she was to go on, and this other spirit entered the body so it could be here at this time to do the work. That, that's like a walk-in, but it's totally different than a regular walk-in. And it said, we have to do this within two minutes after the person leaves the body and before it stops breathing and anything begins to deteriorate. Then it enters the body and it takes over everything. And, but they said, this is not possession. I've worked so much with walk-ins that I wanted to make sure of this in all of my work it is not walk-ins. I mean, it is not possession. People get the wrong idea of that. That's, it's not allowed. It is always within complete agreement with the soul that is leaving. The soul wants out of here. It's too much. It can't take it. So this other soul says, all right, I'll take over for you. That's a normal walk-in. This one is a little different because these are energies coming direct from the source to be in here now. They said, this is the only way we're going to turn the world around. We have to have all of this new energy to change everything. And I had it happen again with another woman 
where they, it said we came in when she died as a baby. And we couldn't come in as a baby because the energy was too strong and we had to have adjustments to the body. So it came in and they're living lives here to help. They're, can you understand, they're, this is a very important time. They've got to do something to turn the world around. Okay, now the world is changing its frequency and its vibration. It's already doing it. You know things are speeding up. Everybody knows that. Time is speeding up. Everything is speeding up. And the earth itself has a tone. I've heard this tone. It's recorded from satellites in space. The earth has a tone, a frequency. That tone has changed, and it is speeded up. They, scientists know this. It's very definite. That this is definitely have proof it is changing. The frequencies and vibrations of the earth are changing. As I said a while ago about dimensions, we're getting ready to shift into a totally new dimension. We have to. The earth has got to the point where they can't do anything else to help it. it just, we're just destroying so much here that it's going to have to be a separation to move into the new frequency. And they said the entire universe is watching. This is the greatest show on earth because it has never happened in the history of the universes before that an entire planet will make the shift at one time. Now, you know, in the Bible, it always talks about the new heaven and the new earth. I believe John of Pathos, when he had that vision, he was seeing a real vision. He didn't realize it was going to be thousands of years in the future. This is what he meant by the new heaven and the new earth and the old is got done away with and the new is going to be taking over. But it is changing, the frequencies are changing, we are shifting already. You can feel it in your own bodies. I don't know if you felt it yet or not. A lot of people are having physical ailments. They're going to the doctors. The doctors don't, can't find anything wrong with them because it's not anything that they've ever experienced before. They have said the doctors are using the old information that they have been taught. They are not aware of what is really happening to the bodies now. Our DNA is being changed. The vibration rate is being changed. And we are shifting with the planet. We have to. It can't happen suddenly because the planet, the body wouldn't be able to handle it. Handle it has to happen gradually, little at a time. And when it makes these little jumps, people are experiencing physical problems. They can be heart palpitations, blood pressure, tiredness, dizziness, muscle aches and pains, all these lots of different things that I've heard, but. When they go to the doctor, they can't find anything wrong because it's nothing physical that they can put their, hand, their finger on. But our DNA is being changed, and the ETs have been helping a lot with this. We're going to be at the point where we're not going to be sick anymore, and we will be at the point where we will never die. We are actually moving into what is called the thousand years of peace in the Bible. The whole earth is going to be totally different. And there's going to be many left behind. Just like the Bible says, many are left behind. Because they can't change their frequency and vibration quick enough to move with it. They have to be working on it now, or you're not going to move. You'll be stuck with the old earth. The ones that are deep into the negativity they said they will be allowed to live out their lives on the old earth. But when they die, they will not come back to the new earth because the new earth will have no negativity. They will be kept, they will be sent to another planet that is still experiencing negativity so they can work it out. Some of them, there's just no hope for them because it's gone too far. They're too loaded down, steeped with all of these karma from past lives and they, they can't get out of it. But those of you who have an idea of what's happening are already making the first step to move into the new earth. 
because they've said, you really don't want to be here when the worst happens. They said, if you think Katrina was bad, imagine that happening all over the world in cities everywhere. Chaos, utter chaos and utter confusion. And people aren't going to understand. They're going to be so uh, confused and frightened. They said, we have to be the voices of reason. We have to be the ones that know what is happening so we can be calm in the midst of the storm. And that's what a lot of these people are coming in now. The ones who are so much into the negativity, they're not going to be able to help or be gotten off out of here so that the new group can help to turn everything around. <clears throat> you might think some of this sounds bad, but <clears throat> it is the evolution of the Earth. This is what's happening. You can't stop it. It is going. Um, one thing, in my book, A Convoluted Two, I mentioned something that was going to happen in the year 2006, and I forgot all about it until I began getting emails from people. <coughs> in there, they were talking about the New Earth and how the ETs said they were going to try to help. You know, their hands are tied. They cannot interfere. That's the primary rule is non-interference in a civilization. They said, we cannot interfere in the karma of anyone. So they have to try to help us some way. <laughs> How are they going to do it? They said it was decided that there would be beams of light shot down to the core of the earth. And it would happen from ships all around the earth shooting this powerful light to the center of the earth to try to stabilize it, to keep it from happening too soon because the earth is getting off course. We are, we're shifting and this is causing tsunamis and earthquakes and they said it was happening, they're trying to stabilize it the best way they could. Shooting this into the core of the earth, it comes back through the soil and affects the DNA of everyone on the planet. I said, isn't that interference? They said, no, because it's interference if you work from the outside. It's not interference if you work from the inside, this way. And you know the ones I said a while ago who said they were taking over the bodies to help here? That's what they said also. It's not interference if we work from the inside to try to help. Now you're going to have a lot of things to think about with all of this, but... That's the only way they can do it because without total interference. So this is what they were talking about. This light was supposed to come down to make these changes to the earth. <clears throat> they said it was going to happen in the year 2006. I'd forgot about it. But I said, if you're going to have all of these ships up there beaming light at the planet, don't you think people are going to notice it? And they said, oh, you typical earthling. <laughs> They said, don't you realize we're in the other dimensions? They can't see us. And they won't even see the light when it comes down and does this, but they will feel the effects. Now, how many of you <clears throat> in October 17th got the emails about something that happened at that time? Did you get it? <clears throat> I happened to be giving a lecture that weekend in uh, Florida. And we had just got these emails. People kept calling and saying, didn't you say something was going to happen in 2006? And I said, yeah, but I didn't uh, really know what it was. And they said, they sent me these emails. <coughs> now, I didn't know where this is coming from. I don't know where the information really came from, but it was all over the internet. And this is what it said anyway. <clears throat> a cosmic trigger event is occurring on the 17th of October, 2006, beginning at approximately 1017, continuing to 117. Some of you remember this? On the 18th. An ultraviolet pulse beam radiating from higher dimensions will cross paths with the Earth on that day. And they will remain within that UV beam for approximately 17 hours of your time. 
and will interpenetrate every electron of pre precious life energy. Now they said, here again, you won't see it. But they said <clears throat> that at that time, it would amplify the thoughts of everyone one million fold on that time in that day. This meant if you were thinking negative, if you were thinking positive, it would be magnified one million fold at that time. Now we have just gone into reprint on book Convoluted 2. So I included this part in the book and I put on the front revised edition. That's the only revised part was I wanted to include this. So something is definitely happening, even though we're not aware of it on the conscious level anyway. <clears throat> Okay, um, you want to get ready back there and to show this uh, picture. I want to tell them what it is first and then I'll tell you to put it on. Can you hear me back there? Are they, okay, well, okay, I was going to tell it first, okay. <clears throat> How many of you know Annie Kirkwood? She doesn't do as many uh, lectures as she used to, but she wrote Mary's Message to the World. And we were doing lectures and panels, and we were talking about the New Earth. And she said she had this vision of the Earth as a solid ball. Then she saw it begin to separate and move apart the way a cell does when it begins to, to separate and reproduce pulling apart with like a cell until it broke apart into two Earths. Over here, she heard them saying, we did it, we did it, we did it. Over here, she heard them say, poor thing, she died believing all of that. So see, the one will not be aware of the other. And that's what they mean by those left behind, will not even be aware that anything has happened. The old earth is still there, vibrating at this lower frequency with all these terrible things happening to it, but the other earth moves into the new dimensions, vibrating so fast that it becomes invisible. So they are not aware anything has ever happened. <clears throat> now, if one lecture, show the picture again. At one of the lectures when I mentioned this, there was a man in the audience and he came up to me later he said, I'm an engineer, I'm a businessman. This has never happened to me before. But when you were describing that scene, of the two earths splitting, he said suddenly the whole auditorium went black and I was in outer space and I was watching it happen. And he said, when he got home, he tried to reproduce it on his computer the best way he could. And this is the picture that he sent us. And he really didn't want us to use his name or anything, but if you look at the picture, you can see the one overlaying it. I don't know how good it shows it. The one is brighter. It's got a glow around it. I don't know how it shows on there. The new earth is like a glowing one that is separating from the old one. But it was funny that he said he never had anything like that happen, but he saw it happening and so he made the a computer model, the picture, and he said we could use it in the book. <clears throat> okay, you can take it away there now. Okay, I had a bunch of notes here, but one of the things they said, one of the main things that will hold people back from ascending and going into the new earth is fear. We're so steeped in fear a lot of it is coming from the government. You know that. They said it'd be better off if you don't watch TV, don't watch the news, don't get caught up in the illusion. Because the more you hear about all the violence and all the bad things that are happening, amplifies it. Better off if you just didn't focus on that at all. But that, I said, do you mean uh, by fear, then, do you mean the wars and things? And they said, yes, the government with the wars and also with the diseases that they are trying to create. You keep the population in fear, then 
you can control it. And that's what a lot of this has to do with the drugs. And you, well, look at your TV. They try to convince you you have to take a pill for everything. And they said these diseases they want you to have shots for, they do not exist. But it's all a way to promote fear. You get the population afraid enough, you can make them do anything. And you know this has been happening since 9-11. All of these new laws coming into effect that would never have happened before, all having to do with fear. And it's like, oh, great father, protect me. You know, and you let them do anything. But they said, you're going to have to start thinking for yourself. We are, um, have access now to instantaneous information on the, on the computers much more than we ever had in the past. You can have information that you would know is real. You read these things, you ask questions, make up your own mind. Don't believe what everybody is telling you. Think for yourself. Don't let fear rule your life because if, if you're afraid, if fear is holding you back, you're not going to progress as we go into the new earth. And it's happening. Our vibrations are increasing. There's no way to hold it back. But some will be left behind because they can't change quick enough. Don't get caught up in the illusion of what's happening. I always tell people when I do a lecture, don't believe what I say. Don't believe what anybody else says. Think for yourself. Ask lots and lots of questions. Then make up your own mind what it is you believe. Your truth may not be my truth, but it is yours. What you believe is the most important thing. Don't let other people sway you. And this is one thing they don't want. They don't want people to start thinking for themselves. But we have to get rid of the karma, forgive, and get rid of fear. Two main things so we can move on. Okay, I think we've got some time for questions. There's probably a lot more I could think of, but these are some, I think I've covered most of it. <clears throat> if you have a question. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I was trying to keep from getting too complicated on you anyway. Okay, anybody have a question? Here's a mic up here. Come up to the mic. Otherwise, we can't hear you. Anyway, you get an idea that I'm going into an awful lot of deep stuff here anyway. Oh, it also says here, as the body is adjusting with this, the, cell, the new frequency, the cells are receiving new instructions. This is what is creating these temporary physical things that we're experiencing. The new instructions that our body is being given. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, 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 get up to it so that they can hear you. Is that this better? Yeah. Okay. We got about 15 minutes anyway. Okay. In the area that I live in, like there's I think things like there's things happen like warrantless searches. If you try to go to court, they don't allow the hearing. I mean, it's v v lots of evil stuff. Now, let's say we go into the new world. Is it going to? I mean, I sort of assume like we'll, it'll just seem all continuous to us. Suddenly, just like all these bad guys, are they going to be like we don't remember them? We think they're dead and we go back and we have our constitution the way it's meant to be? Do you have any answers on that? I'm just trying to figure out exactly what you mean. Okay. Um, <coughs> a lot of us are aware that the constitution, you know, is, is a joke now. We have none of these protections. So in the new world, are, are we going to then function the way it was intended and like the, the bad guys who do evil things to us are going to like just disappear or we think they're dead or we don't remember well, them at all? We're staying with the old world. Hmm? Yeah, they won't go Okay, on. so basically suddenly this guy who poisons my dogs is like, he, he's, he's just gone. Yeah, I mean, all of a I, sudden I mean, he's not around anymore. Yeah, okay. That's what they said. I said, how we, you know, they can't just disappear. Yeah. And he said, mm -hmm. well, all of a sudden they won't be in your life anymore. But, but then we like continue sort of with the Constitution like we've had it and we're not like just sitting around with flowers or 
You know, it's, it's like the same framework. We just think we've continued and the problems are gone. Okay. Yeah, because if you won't be in that anymore. Uh -huh. It will just gradually drift out right. of your life. Okay, thank you. They said you have people in your own life now that you haven't heard from them for a long time, and it's like, mm -hmm. gee, I wonder what happened to them. So it's just a gradual thing. They said it's natural. I don't know. I'm still asking a lot of questions. Yeah? Well, I've been doing a lot. And visions. And uh, one of the things that happened to me was I was shown the vision of Earth, like what you showed. And uh, they said, think of Earth as an atom splitting in order to understand the new world. They also said, now is the time to speak your peace or your truth. Um, they also said to me that I was to write um, on, I, I'm a sculptor, and they said the, what I needed to put on one of these sculptures <clears throat> that I make is um, in order to release fear, because fear will keep us in the negative and keep us from moving into the new world, yeah. that we had to be able to surround anything that happens to us that would create the fear, we need to surround it with light and send unconditional love around even our worst enemy, no matter how bad, yeah. because that takes the power away from them. It's what the Bible says. It all goes back to the same yeah. thing. Yeah. But now my question is, all these voices I hear, is this my higher self, or are these really guides? If your higher self could very well be the one that's doing it, because they are trying to get information through to you. Wow, thank and, you so uh, much. Just listen to it and pay attention. If it sounds right, then it, it is, you know. <clears throat> but that's why so many people are going to be healers, are going to be working in this. this thank so, you. Okay. <clears throat> My question is very simple. All I want is if I can have the honor to see your ring that you're wearing right now, your turquoise ring, because I know that there's something beautiful that happened that day that you received that ring. Oh, yes, Could it's in my honor? book. It's in the custodian. Could I have the honor to see it? The what? To see, to see your ring, just to see it, because I know one? the story behind your ring. Yeah, if you read the custodians, it's yeah. in there. <clears throat> People come up to me and say, is that the ring that you wrote about? <clears throat> but some of the silver has broken off of it. It had two other pieces oh, yes. here. Uh -huh. And people say they've never seen another ring like it. No. But the story of how I got that is in the custodians. Yes, thank okay. you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. okay, my question is, uh, earlier you said that the animals and plants and things are at a lower vibration. Now, when this new earth splits off and it's at a higher vibration, does that mean we're not going to have any plants or animals? Oh, they'll be there. They said there'll be plants that you have never seen before. Beautiful, wonderful plants that uh, will have different kinds of food also okay, than we animals, have now. The and animals the food. will be there? The animals will be there also. Okay, otherwise and I'm also, not I forgot to say that when you enter the new world, you will have your physical body with you for a while. And then eventually you will turn into light and have a light body. But yeah, the animals will be there. Okay. And it'll be wonderful plants. <clears throat> That's something else, too. They said in order to make your body lighter, you have to change your diet. Have you noticed that your diets are changing? We have to get away from heavy foods, anything that's going to hold us down, and eat lighter foods. They said the best thing we can eat is live foods, which is fresh fruits and vegetables. Stay away from any of anything that has the additives in it, like you know the heavy meats. And eventually, they said we're going to be mostly liquid diet. But to watch what you take into your body, they said the body is a miracle. It can handle anything in small doses. You give it too much of anything, and it, that's what hurts it. <clears throat> like with the, um, the additives and the hormones and the things that are in the meat right now. After a while, that begins to call, cause illness. But you watch what you eat. Eat natural as much as possible and uh, smaller portions. They said it'd be good to be like grazing, to have small portions during the day. 
But eventually it'll be a liquid anyway. Okay. I'm interested <clears throat> in these lives that you say when we make choices that break off. If we're trying to live in this life with forgiveness and love and to elevate ourselves, what about these other lives? Are they going to be affected by what we're doing? Or can they be like evil and bring us down? It's all, that's why they said those are not important anymore. Oh. They didn't want me to go there because they said they've already been dealt with. And apparently a lot of it is dealt with in this life. So they said, don't worry about the past lives. Focus on now. No, and I don't mean the past lives. <clears throat> I mean when we make choices. And you said we go off and we have like two different lives. Yeah, no, that's a little more complicated. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we're trying to do the good <clears throat> thing in this life with forgiveness and love, what about those? Do we have any control over those other choices that we didn't take? Well, that I don't know because that is still a very complicated issue. But focus on what you are doing right now. This is the one right here. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> This one's yeah. a little fun, but it's also a little confusing. Um, I have Keep a friend. down to the microphone. Yeah, yeah. or maybe raise it. Yeah. Um, I have a friend, and and of course he wants to be very positive, and and he wants to go in, in the direction of the the lighter world. Who is? A friend. A, a friend, friend of mine. Okay. Yeah. And but we work together, and we we're very close, and and I was was saying, well, you know, being in the in the the darker format of the world or you know the destruction and all that that can actually be a good thing you don't have to look at it as a bad thing it's just no. it's going through a process that that's a different process because the earth is getting rid of its own karma mm -hmm. the earth is a living being also that was why it called to these other beings it's getting rid of its own karma and part of it is these destructions and things right this is like a dog shaking off fleas you <laughs> bite it enough and get irritated enough it's going to shake you off so that's, uh, that's part of it. It is a good thing in that way. Yeah. And so I decided <clears throat> and that... And water is cleansing, too. I decided I'm okay with going with that world and helping that world through its, its own transition yeah. that it's going through. And he says, well, I don't want to go with you. And we're, like, you know, sharing the same lives. And how, how is that going to work? Are we just suddenly not going to be friends? Or are we suddenly just going to disappear from each other? Because <laughs> he says, I don't want to go down your, your reality path. I want to go down my reality path where the wars don't happen and You'll everything else. And I'm saying, no, path. we got to go down this path. You know. Because I had somebody after a lecture in Minneapolis, they come up to me and they were discussing this and they said what about my husband what about my daughters they all going to make their own decisions yeah but you is, can't is, make the decisions is this for them. version of my friend greg gonna end up going with me in my you know my path and then i'm a different version of myself in his reality going down his path i get a little complicated there <laughs> but <clears throat> are we going to notice that yeah, but it'd be up to them. If they decide they don't want to go with the new earth, then mm -hmm. it's their decision. And then um, they how said does... eventually they're all going to get there anyway. Oh, yeah. Some of them will take longer than others, but eventually that's where it's all going. So does this phenomenon that we're talking about kind of explain experiences that some people are having where, like, they go to a restaurant they've been going to, to for 10 years and they, they don't have something that that restaurant has always had and they say, well, we've never had it, but you remember they had it, you know, and you're like, yeah, I've been going here for five years, I know you have it. Well, we've never made it that way. See, this is what I talked about earlier. People are talking about they, there's something is there and it's not there when they go back and uh, there's, I had a lot of examples of that we're in my book. We're shifting in realities, and we're that aware means they're that we're in and out of it. these other dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay. We'll do these three, and I think that's all we're going to have time for then. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Um, I have one question about um, the concept of um, when you make a decision, and then you know, there's two separate. Yeah. I said these are off. things I'm still dealing right. with. You know? Now, is the other life? on this earth or is it in another dimension? Do you know what I'm asking? Yeah, because that's what it does. It goes off into another, into another dimension, dimension and is existing there. Right, okay, mm -hmm. thanks. But you just get to focus on this because that's the only way right. our minds will work. Right, uh -huh. okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, hello, what have you learned from your guides in relation to the uh, benevolent, maybe, 
ETs, the neutral, so to speak, ETs. I've learned everything. And maybe the, if there are malevolent ETs. That's all there are. There is and, no negative. And how, how, during this transition period to this new earth, what have they given you in terms of guidance about how humanity is going to interrelate and react uh, upon recognition in, in the widest sense by humanity that these ETs actually do exist? They're there to help us. They're waiting now. And I went, in my, some of my sessions, they've helped us before whenever the earth has gone through disasters and destructions. They've helped us before, and I've written about this. No, they, are, they have told me in my book, The Custodians, all the reasons why they're here, why they're doing what they're doing, and it's very positive. They want us to succeed. They'll be here to help us, but they can't interfere. They have to just wait till things happen. Now, that sounds like a, a, bene a benevolent group of ETs that are here to really help us out. Oh, there are, all of them are, are benevolent. Are there any ETs that you've heard about that are not no. in that? I have never found any that are, are negative. See, they have rules and regulations also that they must abide by. They cannot do certain things. Now some, I think I had it in the program, the portal was open for a while when some of these groups of ETs were allowed in here to get certain things. A lot of it was materials that they needed for their planet, minerals and things that we didn't use but they have used. They were allowed in to do these things. They were not of the highest purposes, but they are now that portal has been closed because they were allowed to finish what they were doing, and now the other portal is opening that going into the new world. Is there any residual negative karma from what these previous ETs have done, and have they interacted with our government leaders? Oh, I've written about all of this, yes. So give us, can you give us like a short summary? No, we don't have enough time. Maybe in, in three it's sentences. It's all in my book, The Custodians. The Custodians. The Custodians, okay. and I'm selling them for $5 out there. Well, what would you say is, our, is uh, the thing that, as this transition occurs, that we need to be aware of most in terms of, of dealing with a negative leadership that we see around us all the time and the negative influence and what would you That's what they said, start thinking for yourself and don't believe everything they say. But yeah, the ETs that I have encountered, see, there's definite rules and regulations. They're not allowed to interfere with the karma of any human being and they're not allowed to harm any human being. The things where you've heard where they, are, they said they've hurt people is because they didn't understand what was happening. And that's what I've done in my work for 20 years, is find out what is happening to the person. And the book is The Custodians. We brought a lot of books that were returned from the bookstores. I mean, they're dingled, as I call them, and we can't sell them at full price. We're trying to sell them all at $5, if anybody's interested in any of these books. But The Custodians has a lot about my work with ETs and why they're here and what they're doing, what they're doing and the whole purpose of all of it. Where are these books going? Over here where the, book, the, uh, where the tables are. In the, the next room where all the tables are, are set up. My daughter's over there and she'd be selling uh, all of these. We brought a whole bunch of them with us. Okay. Besides diet, uh, do your guides talk about any other concrete tools that we can do, like mantras or visualizations, the violet flame? I I'm not getting it. What? Uh, besides diet, do your guides talk about things that we can do, concrete things to raise our vibrations, yeah. like mantras or visualizations? Do they mention the violet flame? Yeah, that's what we're supposed to be helping each other, too, in raising our vibrations with love, forgiveness. I don't know if it helped with the forgive the president or not, because I think he's a goofy guy anyway, stupid. But anyway, yeah, they want us to raise our vibrations and to help with all of us. Okay, I think that's everything, and thank you. You've been a wonderful audience. Okay. <clears throat>